Ladies and gentlemen, Salam Mike, back with another video. Lots of questions going on. As you've seen, some of the weightlifting footage on my Instagram and YouTube here, we're gonna talk about, are the weightlifting movements optimal for powerlifters, team athletes, basketball, football, soccer players, strongman, et cetera, et cetera. We talked about it before on how to integrate it, but now we're talking about, is it the most efficient? Is it the most optimal? Before we dive into the video, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications, new videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, tons of training vlogs, some food, some informational stuff, stick around. And we're talking about, generally speaking, a basketball player, a football player, even a power lifter, what happens in training may look slightly different, but the goal is the same, to prepare them for their sport the best we can. And we're talking about a basketball player, they need to be best at playing basketball. Now basketball players, we want them to be stronger, faster, move a little bit better, right? And the Olympic lifts do allow you to overload your muscles, be a little bit more explosive. Working on triple extension, extending your hips, knees, and ankles is what allows you to sprint faster, jump higher, et cetera, et cetera. And it may be the most optimal way to work on triple extension, but they're also very technical, very difficult lifts. And we we're talking about athletes who are really good at basketball, football, etc. they don't have the amount of time to work on the technicalities of that lift because they're practicing their sport. If we're gonna take Kobe Bryant and we want him to be the most efficient basketball player he can, and he's going seven days a week, three hours working on his free throw, his turnaround jumper, his post moves, we can't then expect him to take five years, three years, two years, even one year, three hours a day, multiple times a week to become an efficient person snatching or clean and jerking. Now you can get good, you know, carryover or gains from the clean and jerk and the snatch, but the time, the effort, the risk to reward on those movements are not worth it if you ask me as a strength and conditioning coach. The movements are very technical and take years to become proficient at, right? For someone who become an Olympic weightlifter, they're working on their technical proficiency years and years and hours and hours and hours and the risk to reward is just not worth it. There's some movements maybe not as optimal, but very close, that we can get some triple extension in that I can teach someone in one session, in 10 minutes. I can teach a six-year-old on how to do a med ball toss into a wall above their head, a push press, potentially a box jump or some plyometrics that work on triple extension. Even if we want to load it a little bit heavier, we can do trap bar against bands jumps. We can do, um, it's called a vert max. It's basically a leg press with rubber bands in the back. There's other exercises that the wrist of the ward are just better. And that's what I recommend for even power lifters. If they want to get a little bit more explosive, they want to feel more athletic, but don't want to take away from the fatigue, the systematic stress or systemic stress and the work and the hours it takes to learn the Olympic lifts, they can get in some jumps. They can get in some uh, more athletic type movements with a med ball and then warm up using those and then get into their squats, deadlifts, and bench rather than taking the time to really work on the mobility and the technicality of the Olympic lifts. Now for me, you guys are saying, well, you are working on that. And that's something, a goal of mine to become a beginner and learn more about them. And I'm having fun training with my homie Ben, who's a really good coach and lifter. My specific goals right now are not powerlifting. I'm saying that if your goals are to be the best basketball player, the best strongman, the best powerlifter, the best whatever it might be, we have to be the most efficient, the most bang for your buck, the most risk to reward that we can in those movements. You can teach, I can teach someone how to squat efficiently and start to load them either in a Bulgarian split squat or a regular squat, safety squat bar or a box squat for a basketball player, or football player in a week easily. And we can make progress on those lifts safely. For someone to become efficient to do a clean, it may take months if not years. So we've got to be more efficient with our time. The goal of an athlete in the gym is to get stronger. It's the strength and conditioning part. It's not to get better at their sport. We don't have to be so specific. The specificity in basketball comes with the ball on the court. It doesn't come from in the gym, right? So if you're an Olympic weightlifter, the specificity is the clean and jerk and the snatch, slight variations of that, and then their strength portion or accessories come in the squat, the front squat, the clean pull, the high pull, et cetera, et cetera. Same with powerlifting, right? We have the squat bench dead, we have variations of those. We need general fitness enough to recover from those, maybe some walking or warm up. And then we're going into accessories that may be some kind of isolation movements, building more muscle to potentially build more strength. What I'm saying is there's a ladder of priority here, a pyramid of priority. And when basketball, football, even powerlifting are at the top, Olympic weightlifting is far down the road of what may actually help us. 
versus the time and effort it'll take to even be efficient at those movements. A typical warm up would go if I'm working with some basketball players or rugby players, um, football players, etc., that I have in the past, is we're gonna wanna go general to specific. We've talked about warm ups a lot on kaizentraining.com. We have a free blog newsletter if you wanna check that out, where we teach you guys as much as we can. But depending on the task of the day, say it's lifting, um, let's say it's gonna be a squat day, the main goal is a squat. For an athlete, even though it's a squat day and we want to get more proficient in the squat, this warm up is going to be very similar, whether you're a powerlifter or a basketball player. Um, but throwing in some plyometrics or something might help you get a little bit better, a little bit more optimal for that session. So what we're going to do is go very general, maybe a walk, an elliptical, a bicycle, a salt bike, whatever it might be. And we want to get our whole body generally warm, 10 to 15 minutes. From there, we're going to get slightly more specific and work on what we need to prepare ourselves, exercise preparation specific preparation for myself, individualized preparation for myself to get ready for those movements. So if you have really tight hips, if you um, have some shoulder issues to get underneath the squat bar, that's the time to start to address these. So for me, I have tight hips, sitting down all day, either podcasting, YouTubing, or twitching. And so what I would do is I do some walking lunges, try to open up my hips. I mean, you can even do some uh, kettlebell squats, holding the bar in the front, the goblet squat, get a little bit of depth going. If you have some shoulder issues, maybe you're doing some band pull apart, some face pulls, opening up, getting some blood in the shoulder so you can get under the barbell. From there, we're gonna get as specific as we can. So with the squat itself, what we would do is actually squat the barbell and start to move around, get some blood going. What I like to do with my athletes or even myself when I'm trying to be a little bit more athletic is I'll superset the super specific warming up, the squatting the barbell, right? Maybe sets of five to 10, getting the blood going, try to hit depth with kind of an exercise preparation movement, maybe a system preparation movement like a box jump, maybe a med ball toss overhead. You guys have maybe seen the strongman or Highland Games guys throwing kegs over the head. We would simply do that same type of movement. It's like a kettlebell swing, except we're gonna release a med ball either into a wall behind us or straight above us. As well as you guys can Google tons of different plyometrics or different types of box jumps, variations, and spectrums kind of on how to work your way through the difficulty of the box jump. Most of the box jumps, plyometrics, med ball stuff, the explosive triple extension to feel a little bit more athletic will be done kind of like a strength day. Lower reps and higher sets. So on a box jumps, we might do five sets of two, five sets of one, whether it's loaded, whether it's a depth jump, whether it's a single leg or multiple, multiple leg box jump. Again, there's tons of different articles, videos, etc., on the internet uh, to teach you different plyometric movements. And maybe we can get that into another video. But basically, I just want to talk about ways to feel more athletic, kind of get yourself moving faster, jumping higher, potentially running faster, even though a lot of that may be genetic. And a lot of it is a balance of the specificity of practicing jumping and running, as well as getting strength and being able to transfer that power into those movements. But end of the day, I don't think that the clean and jerk and snatch are the most optimal way to get bigger, faster, stronger for majority of team sport athletes, individual athletes, anyone that's not Olympic uh, weightlifting. I don't think that your time effort is worth the risk reward on those movements. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to continue to do some weightlifting because I enjoy it. That's a whole different story. If you enjoy it, you want to get good at it, you have some fun, you have some friends, you want to try something new, whole different story. We're talking about op what's optimal for other sports. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Salam Mike. New video, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. Be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Catch me on Twitch almost every single day. Salam Mike on Twitch. I appreciate you guys. Catch you in the next one.